Hello students, today I am going to discuss on the topic Absolute Dating Method. Prehistory deals with a long span of time. Therefore, one of the most important aims of prehistorian is to establish the chronological sequence of the past events. At present, there are a number of dating methods in prehistory. These methods can be discussed under two categories. One is absolute and the other is relative dating method. Absolute dating is also known as chronometric dating. It is primarily sought to facilitate time sequence in terms of years. It provides the actual time span by a site sequence with close approximation. Absolute dating usually demands high technology laboratory and hence it is costly. It also demands the help of sciences like geophysics, geochemistry, astronomy, nuclear physics, etc. There are different types of absolute dating methods. They are radiocarbon dating, Potassium argon dating, thermoluminescence, dendrochronology, electro spin resonance, fission track dating, paleomagnetic dating, obsidian hydration, Bob analysis, and amino acid decimization. However, in our discussion today, we will be talking about only two types of dating, that is radiocarbon dating and potassium argon dating. Now come to the radiocarbon dating method. Radiocarbon dating or C14 method has revolutionized the study of archaeology during 1940s. Developed by Willard F. Levy and a team of scientists at the University of Chicago. It is one of the most important and popular method of absolute or chronometric dating. The method is a chemical analysis used to determine the age of organic materials based on their content of the radioisotope of carbon C14. The basic principle of the method is that cosmic rays produce neutrons in the atmosphere. Say for example, cosmic rays reacts in the atmosphere and produces neutron. Then these neutrons react with this nitrogen in the atmosphere and it produces a proton and an atom of C14 and instead of that of the normal C12. It subsequently evolved into the most powerful method of dating late Pleistocene and Holocene artifacts and geologic events up to about 50,000 years.
This method is very useful in determining the chronology of a site consisting of circle and jar bones. Chemically, carbon-14 seems to behave exactly as ordinary non-radioactive carbon C12. Therefore, like C12, the C14 atoms readily mix with the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere and produce radioactive carbon dioxide. C14O2. This carbon dioxide is absorbed by plant life in the normal way. Herbivores eat the plants and carnivores eat the herbivores. While main who are omnivores eat the plants, herbivores and carnivores. Thus the C14 originally produced in the environment equally distributed among all living things and maintained at a constant level till their death. As long as a matter is living, it continues to receive C12 and C14 atoms in a constant proportion. After death, the organism is no longer in exchange with the atmosphere and no longer absorbs atoms of contemporary carbon. On the other hand, C14 that remains in the organism starts to decay in a constant rate. In something over 7200 years only, half of the C14 remains and in similar period, only half of that residue. If, therefore, the amount of C14 left with the circle or bones found in a given site can be determined, then the age of the organic material can also be determined. The half-life is measured by counting the number of beta radiations emitted per minute per gram of the given material. By radiocarbon method, one can date many different types of organic and inorganic materials as long as they consist of carbon. The datable organic materials are charcoal, pollen, woods, twigs, seeds, bones, antlers, cell, fish remains, insect remains, etc. The inorganic materials are sediments and soils, ice core, metal casting ore, underground water, pigment from wall painting and work of art, etc. The ideal material for radiocarbon dating is the wood charcoal, which are found in an archaeological site. Unaltered wood from dry sites, soot, grasses, dung, either animal or human, well preserved antler or tucks, paper, calcareous tufa formed by algae, lack muds, parchment, peat, and chemically unaltered molluscs cells all contain enough carbon-14 and can provide sample for dating. Unburned bone contains a substance called collagen. which is rich in carbon and these can be extracted and dated. The amount of sample requirement for radiocarbon dating is different in different laboratories. For example, in a laboratory at Cambridge, the recommended sample requirement are as follows. Charcoal, I2-12 grams, wood, 10-30 grams, cell, 30 to 100 grams, peat 10 to 25 grams, bones 20 to 100 grams, etc. While selecting a sample for dating, the important thing 
to be noted is that it has to be taken with great care in order to not to contaminate with more recent material. When Libby invented this method, he used a modified form of Giger counter where he could measure carbon 14 per unit weight of carbon. Later on, with the use of developed and improved machinery, the selected carbon sample is turned into gears and liquid form. The sample is not handled after it has been made ready for conversion to a gas. Thus, the danger of radioactive contamination from the atmosphere has been eliminated. With the gas proportional counters, a much smaller sample is needed to make an age determination. The calculation of the age sample is done on the basis of half-life value of carbon-14. Recently, C-14 counting is done with the help of mass spectrometry. With the original methods, the effective range of radiocarbon dating was about 30,000 years. With the more modern system, 50,000 years is the practical limit. But for samples of great importance and elaborate, expensive and time-consuming process of isotopic enrichment can be carried out, that will enable the scientists to ascertain the age of material as old as 70,000 years. The dates derived from such samples are, however, not absolute in terms of years. They simply indicate an interval of time within which the actual age most probably lies. This is expressed in terms of a date which is midway in this interval with the limits indicated by a plus or minus probable error. Thus, a typical C14 date might read plus minus 8300 plus 300 years BP. This means that the date of the given specimen lies between 8600 to 8000 years before present. Using the radiocarbon method as a source of objective information, archaeologists are able to build stone age chronologies as well as establish the primary chronocultural boundaries. Now let's come to the advantages and disadvantages of radiocarbon dating method. The main advantages of the carbon-14 method are fourfold. Firstly, it gives us the absolute chronology. Secondly, the material for dating is generally available in archaeological sites. Thirdly, the method is low cost. And lastly, readily accessible facilities. Now come to the disadvantages. They are number one, the radiocarbon method adequately dead organic materials up to 50,000 years old only. Next is the rate of which C14 is produced in the atmosphere has fluctuated considerably because of the change in the strength of the Earth's magnetic fields and alteration in solar activity. Thirdly, the materials dated by C14 typically quite porous, that is, easily contaminated by old or young carbon. And fourthly, one must be very careful with pre-treatment and sample selection. Lastly, the radiocarbon dates are expressed in BP, 
and are accompanied by a statistical margin of error which corresponds to the measurement of a random phenomenon. The calibration is necessary to transform these results into calendar dates. The radiocarbon dating method has proved itself useful when the laboratory uses all possible gear and the archaeologist supplies material that has been collected with proper methods. Today, this method is the most widely accepted technique for studying the chronological relationship of archaeological complexes. Now come to the next dating method that is potassium argon dating. This method is similar to carbon dating. The earth's crust contains potassium of which isotope K40 decays to argon A40 at a known rate. The ratio of potassium to argon may be measured to a certain depth of minerals and rocks in a deposit. Potassium is one of the most abundant chemical elements found in the earth crust. In many rock forming minerals, it is one of the major components. There are three naturally occurring isotopes of potassium namely K39, K40 and K41. That is the mass number of potassium are 39, 40 and 41. It is found that 88.8% of potassium K40 decays to calcium Ca40. That is calcium with mass number 40 by emission of electron, beta particle and 11.2% of potassium 40 decays to argon Ar40 by a process called electron capture. Therefore, in a mineral rich with potassium, there seems to be a gradual decay of potassium and subsequent growth of calcium-40 and argon-40 as long as time passes. The ratio of potassium to argon may be measured to a certain depth of minerals and rocks in a deposit. This method is able to cover a wide range of time even far greater than C14 method. Because the half-life of the radioactive potassium is 1330 million years. The method has proved quite useful in dating some hominid fossils as employed in the site of Old White Gorse in East Africa where the remains were as old as 1.75 million years. Potassium argon method has enabled the prehistorians to work out the chronology of human beings and their evolution. The earliest hominid forms go beyond 4 million years. Now come to the next point, advantages and disadvantages of potassium argon dating. The advantage of the method is that it works well in case of the site which are 500,000 years old. But the disadvantages of the method is that it can be applied to only those rocks and minerals which are rich in potassium. Since those rocks are available only in volcanic areas, the method is restricted to those areas. The method which help to determine that of a specimen in terms of years and thereby an unit of time associated with the event is known as absolute dates. There are various types of absolute dating techniques evolved during 1940s onwards. 
carbon dating and potassium argon dating are two important absolute dating techniques. With the radiocarbon dating, the remnant radioactive carbon present in an organic or inorganic material found in archaeological site can be measured. Potassium argon dating method is based on the principle that potassium present in rock or minerals decay in a constant rate to argon which can be measured. Carbon dating can be dated up to 70,000 years while potassium dating can date up to millions of years old specimens. Out of the two methods, carbon dating is much more widely applicable method.